glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad. We are glad that you are joining us in this virtual space to praise our amazing God. Can we just give God some praise for allowing us to see another week, another day, clothed and in our right minds? We give, give the Lord God the great praise. great things God has done because of the blood of Jesus. What a joy it is to greet you and worship today. What an honor it is to come before you. As we lift up the word of Almighty God, we say good morning, we say good afternoon, we say good evening. Whatever time you may watch this service, we want you to know that you are a blessing to us. We thank God for Pastor Lanson and all that she does with our youth and young adults, with Dr. Carroll, working with our children in Christian education. We thank you for supporting our musicians and staff and all those here to make this service a great time and a great place. To our AV team, to our Centurions, our COVID-19 uh, staff and committee, we are so grateful that God is allowing us to do a wonderful thing in this space. Oh, it is Jesus, Jesus in our soul. Please join us now as we pray. Father God in heaven, because it is Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, God, for an opportunity to worship. We thank you, God, for this chance to pray. But God, we know your word says, the fervent prayer of righteous people availeth much. And so we thank you, God, for Big Mama and Big Daddy who prayed long time ago. We thank you, God, for an uncle who called us by name, an auntie who drug us to Sunday school. We thank you, God, that we are in the land of living witnesses, a great cloud of witnesses. And God, we pray that their spirit of rejoicing uh, is giving us strength right now to do your will. God, take the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts now. We pray that they can be used for your glory. We ask this prayer in the precious name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Today, my friends, I invite you, if you have your word, to turn to the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 9. We'll be reading verses 18 to 26 from a message translation, Eugene Peterson's writing. As we hear God's word, if you have your pen or your little gadget to highlight on your smart device, I invite you to do so because I think that this word will indeed speak to you and give you motivation and inspiration to be a stronger witness for the Lord. Starting at verse 18 of chapter 9 from the message translation, let us hear the word of Almighty God. And as he finished saying this, a local official appeared, bowed politely, and said, My daughter has just now died. If you come and touch her, she will live. Jesus got up and went with him. His disciples following along, just then, a woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years slipped in from behind and lightly touched his robe. She was thinking to herself, if I can just put a finger on his robe, I'll get well. Jesus turned, caught her at it. Then he reassured her, courage, daughter. You took a risk of faith, and now you're well. Now, the woman was well from then on. By now, they had arrived at the house of the town official and pushed their way through the gossips looking for a story and the neighbors bringing in casseroles. Jesus was abrupt. Clear out. This girl isn't dead. She's sleeping. They told him he didn't know what he was talking about. But when Jesus had gotten rid of the crowd, he went in, took the girl's hand, and pulled her to her feet, alive. Now, the news was soon out and traveled throughout the region. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And if you could give your attention to verse 21a of this text, for it says to us, and she was thinking to herself, if I can just put a finger on his robe, I'll get well. Jesus turned, caught her at it, then he reassured her. Again, she was thinking to herself, 
If I can just put a finger on his robe, I'll get well. Jesus turned, caught her at it, then he reassured her. And my friends, with the aid of the Holy Spirit and your encouragement today, I want to lift up this text and for a brief moment continue to preach and teach on our subjects of doing things extra as we preach today on our title, Turning Our Thinking Into Action. Turning Our Thinking Into Action. They say it was around 1943 when a young preacher was offered the opportunity of a lifetime, that is, to take over a popular gospel radio show entitled Songs in the Night. Now, since the cost of, of the program on the air was rather high and the pastor did not have a lot of money but a very large vision uh, to reach souls for the gospel, the preacher himself came up with an idea. He thought for a moment that maybe he would forego part of his salary and, gave, and give part of that salary to pay the expenses for the radio show. He thought about it and then he took some action. He told his board, and his board members were receptive of the idea and, of course, accepted his suggestion, and he put it into motion. He thought about it, and then he put it into action. The young preacher, y'all, he, he then approached a well-known gospel singer, and he asked this gospel singer, Dr. Monroe, to be in charge of the choir and the program for the radio show. And after initially giving some pullback from the invitation, the singer agreed to help out. That decision, y'all, would change the singer's life forever as well as that young preacher. For you see, he later realized to say it was the beginning, the beginning of a humble beginning, but a beginning of an unbelievable journey. It was an exciting time for both of them as God began to reveal and unfold the miraculous works of evangelism. And this extra push, y'all, this extra push of turning a thought into action produced what we now know as some very, uh, uh, very proud but also very marvelous evangelistic work. They, the gospel singer, y'all, that was invited to be on the radio was none other than George Beverly Shea. And the young preacher that I'm speaking of was none other than Charlottean native Billy Graham. Let me share with you another story when it comes to pushing thinking into action. And let me just share how one person has used her faith, y'all, for moving from excellence into a more stronger connection with Almighty God. I'm speaking of none other than Miss Erica Turner, the CMS Principal of the Year and the Southwest Region Principal of the Year. She has a faith story, y'all, that I want you to hear and a faith story that I believe that shows how we can go from thinking into action. Thinking into action. Uh, when I get up in the morning, the first thing I do is my morning devotional. Um, that consists of scripture reading, prayer, usually singing. And when I start singing, I wake up my entire house when I start singing. Uh, but it's, it, it's important to give God thanks immediately when I wake up. And so that's part of my morning routine. And then as I'm getting dressed, I'm still reverencing God. I, I tell people that I have a worship experience on my way to work because I'm always listening to my gospel music. Uh, myself and Tasha Cobb, we always uh, have a, a, a worship experience on my way to work. And I'm grateful that I live an hour from the school uh, because it gives me time to get myself in a good space uh, before I come into the building. And even when I pull into the parking lot, I say another little prayer before I come into the building. So that's typically my morning routine. Can you hear that? She says that she starts her day with an extra hour of worship to God. She and Tasha Cobb, because you know, y'all got some favorites that you sing to also. It, she's starting her day and she, she, she's lifting up the spirit that's inside of her, y'all. She is moving from a thought process into an action. Did I mention she is the principal of the year of Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools and also the region, Southeast, Southwest Regional Principal of the Year 
going on for national recognition, the principal of the year. Here is someone who doesn't separate school from life and work from life, but she brings it all together with Almighty God. That, that's worth giving God a hand clap of praise. That's worth putting up a, a thumbs up in the chat box right there when you got a principal. Now, I don't have children in school, but if they were in school, I would enroll them at that school with a principal who calls on the name of the Lord. You know, there's something significant about people who go the extra mile, and that's what we preached on last week, going the extra mile. But there are three things I want to just lift up about those who go the extra mile. And get this, those who go the extra mile, they have experienced it. They know what it means when someone else does a little bit more, a little bit extra. When you go the extra mile, you have a cause that matters. You just don't get up with the same same 10, 2, and 4, but you have a cause to make a difference. You want to be a value add to somebody else. When you go the extra mile, you care about the people that you are with. Again, I've said it before, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Principal Erica Turner, y'all, is one of those. Uh, Evangelist Billy Graham was one of those, and I, I think I'm looking at somebody right now who recognizes the power of Almighty God in your sphere and in your life to make a difference for the gospel. Will you just give God a praise right there for God making a difference in your life and you being making a for the difference in somebody else's life. Today, 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 we want to look at a text, y'all, but it's really pushing an idea to turn our thinking into action, turning our thinking into into action. And we open up the text, Pastor Linson, by beginning to talk about an unknown or unnamed person in a story who finds herself in a crowd. An unknown or unnamed person in the midst of a crowd following Jesus Christ. Now, traditionally, what we find in our minister, Donna, is that the crowds that followed Jesus were normally men and boys. Now, don't miss this. The crowd closest to Jesus were men and boys. And I only make that emphasis because when you see here is a woman pressing her way to get to Jesus, she had to press her way through some men and some boys. Okay, you're looking at me funny, so let me say it this way. I think there's somebody watching right now, a woman, a sister who's got a major shout and a great testimony of how you have pressed your way through some hard-headed men and some hard-headed boys boys. There is somebody right now who can give God a thumbs up and a praise in the chat box right now who knows what it means if it had not been for God on your side working with some hard-headed men and some hard-headed boys. Okay, all right, let me get back to the paper because you see the good news, y'all, is that this woman did not let some hard-headed men and some hard-headed boys stop her from her blessing. The Bible says, the Bible says, is that she, she, she was typically held back because of her sex, but also because of her condition. And I want somebody to be liberated today because God has made you in God's own image. And God made you in God's own image because of your sex and because of your condition. Okay. God made you in God's own image in spite of what other folks say. God made you that way because you are a pure representation of Almighty God. You see, we have to always affirm people for who they are because we didn't make them. So we should stop trying to break them. See, the Bible describes this, this story, y'all, of Jesus healing this woman miraculously who has this bleeding uh, disorder, y'all, and is coming to us not just in Matthew's gospel, but Brother Sean is there in Mark. It's also there in the gospel of Luke. This story, y'all, is repeated intentionally by the gospel writers because they want everybody to read it to know that God still is able to hit a straight lick with a crooked stick. And the good news, y'all, is this woman represents the all the part of us. She has no name mission in the Bible right now, but she have, does have a name in the end. I'm going to get to that in a little bit. Because what we find out is this woman who had been bleeding for 12 years 
finally makes a connection to Almighty God. Verse 20 and 21 of Matthew's gospel is where we're hanging out, Sister Margaret, because it tells us just when a woman, just then, a woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years, she slipped in from behind and lightly touched his robe. Verse 21 is our focus. It says, she was thinking to herself. She was thinking to herself, the Bible says. If I can just put my finger, touch the, the end of his robe, I will get well. She was thinking to herself. All oh, friends, hear what I'm saying today. Because there is power in a thought. There is power when we think the right things. There is power when we put our minds together and think the right things. There is power when we believe what we think and we can achieve what we think. There is power, y'all, when we think the right kinds of thoughts. Because you see, think about just what I just said. Because practically everything we have and everything we own and all that we use was conceived, first of all, in a thought. Your telephone was conceived in a thought. The car you drive was conceived in a thought. The, 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 the microwave that you use to cook your breakfast while you watching me was conceived in a thought. You, you, your computer that you're watching right now was conceived in a thought. Flying on an airplane was a thought idea by the right brothers. You see, I like to quote uh, Brother Steve Harvey because he says, imagination is the key of coming attraction, and meaning that God has placed some things in your mind, some thoughts in your head that are now key to coming attractions. And you see, I can't help but to go on and push it a little bit further, Brother L. It was Johann Wolfgang uh, 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 who said it this way. He says, thinking is easy, acting is difficult, and to put one's thoughts into act is most difficult thing in the world. Miss P, hear what Dale Carnegie says. Dale Carnegie says, in action breeds doubt and fear. Action breeds confidence and courage. If you want to conquer fear, do not sit at home and think about it. Get out and get busy. I say it this way, when you get up, when you wake up, you ought to get up. And when waking up is not just at five or six in the morning, when God speaks to you in your life, that's your wake up moment. When God moves things out of the way, that's your wake up moment. When God opens up a door that only God can open up, that's your wake up moment. Is there anybody right now in the chat box want to wake up? Won't you wake up and be the man God calls you to be? Wake up and be the woman that God has created to wake up and be the parent, be the student, be the scholar, be the entrepreneur, be all that God is. It's time to wake up. Oh, hear what I'm saying tonight because I, I want you to move from, from just thinking about it to, to putting it into action. That is why, that is why I got to give a major shout out, y'all, to a theme of a program called If You Can See Her, You Can Be Her. If you can see her, you can be her. You see, in the midst of all the commercials that I watched at the Super Bowl last week, from Doritos to, to watching, uh, uh, watching about buying a house on Rocket.com, I thought that was pretty funny too. Uh, uh, I watched the commercials, y'all, but the one that stuck out was if you can see her, uh, uh, you can be her. And it was an affirmation, y'all, of how uh, uh, marketing companies and ad agencies are really trying to embrace women just as they are. All colors, all sizes, all shapes, all backgrounds, uh, affirming women as they are. You, you don't have to look like a Barbie doll to be called a woman. You are made in the image of Almighty God. And I like that because what this ad agency is doing, they are rising to the challenge. And somebody needs to hear what I'm saying. When you see this woman in the text of Matthew, she is rising to the challenge 
the challenge of accepting not just where she is, but the opportunity to go even farther, rising to the challenge, being able to be in the right place at the right time. The Bible tells her that there was an overwhelming number of people to which she had to press her way through. She was in the crowd, but she rose to the challenge. The Bible tells us that she was ostracized because she had an internal hemorrhaging. She had a bleeding, but she rose to the challenge. Leviticus said that because of her internal bleeding, she could not be with a man. Because of her internal bleeding, she could not be with her children. Because of the internal bleeding, she could not be in worship. Y'all get this. For 12 long years, mm. she had bled like this. And for 12 long years, she was outside, ostracized for 12 long years, but she pressed her way through. And that says, if you can see her, you can be her. I like that, y'all, because what it helps me understand now is that though I may not have everything that you think I should have, if I can see myself in the presence of Almighty God, that I can be all that God wants me to be. If I can see myself getting up and moving on from where the devil has had me down, I can go higher and further where God wants me to be. If you can see her, okay, if you can see him, okay, if you can see them, okay, if you can see us, okay, you are to be us. And the best thing about a child of Almighty God, when we have our eyes focused on the kingdom, on doing the right things, we will get that touch. Here is the most amazing question when it comes to us here tonight, today, Brother Jerome, is that Jesus raises the question in the midst of the crowd, who touched me? Now, 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 don't, don't, don't skip over that too fast and say, how in the world could he raise the question, who touched me, when I just told you there was a crowd of hard-headed men and hard-headed boys. But Jesus recognized that not just somebody bumped up against him, but they touched him enough to get a need met. And I think I'm talking to somebody right now because God has placed you in front of the screen because God is trying to tell you, I'm tired of just bumping into you. I need you to touch me. Let me say it again. God is telling somebody watching right now, I want to have an intimate relationship with you. I want to be close to you than you are maybe wanting to be closer to me. So just stop having a casual relationship with me, bumping elbows. I know it's COVID-19. I know you can't really touch people, but the God I serve wants to open up God's arms and put a great big old bear hook right now. Will you just let God hug you right where Will you give yourself a great big old COVID-19 hug? You ain't hugged nobody in 11 months. So just hug yourself right now with the power of Almighty God, knowing that that's the way that God wants to touch you. The Bible, the Bible tells us is that, is that Jesus even says, someone touch me. Somebody touch me. You see, that's what the community is asking right now. Who is going to touch them? That is what our brothers and sisters are saying right now. Who is going to touch? I'm tired of y'all driving past me on Triad Street. I'm tired of y'all rolling up your windows and locking your doors. I'm tired of you speeding through the stop sign, acting like I ain't there, acting like you don't see me. I got a big old doggone sign. You know that I'm out there. I want to know where you touch me, where you make a difference. Will you deposit something to my spirit? Will you make me feel like the man that God made me, the woman that God created to me? I want to know, will you touch me? Oh, y'all hear what the text says. The woman, the woman seeing that she could not go unnoticed. You see, that's the other thing about when Jesus touched you. You said you wasn't going to tell nobody, but you just couldn't keep it to yourself. Oh, you said you weren't going to act all holy and all of that, but when God opened up a door and made a way out of no way, you stopped your Presbyterian folding your arms and your, your shout, because you know you used to shout like this right here, and now you say, I can't wait to get in the presence 
Uh, oh, if you was here, we'd be getting some Hammond B3 child music on right now because when you know that God has answered and you know that God has delivered and you know that God has picked up and you know that God has come through, you don't care who's around or who's talking, you're going to get up and do your holy dance because you know. Oh, here's the good news. Here's the good news. You, you know, the, 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 the Bible says that Jesus... First of all, it's introduced to a certain woman. Jesus is then saying, someone. And the Bible says, Jesus then speaks to her and says, daughter. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself because I want you to understand that Jesus only did that, my friend, Brother David, because the woman took action. I found a quote by Benjamin Franklin, Dr. Mulder simply says, uh, uh, well done is better than well said. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that. What it says to me is that, that I would rather have something well done than talking about it being well said. You see, the reason for the healing, y'all, was this woman. This woman moved her verb, her noun, into a verb. Okay, she was thinking, but then she took action. See, 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 I did my research, and Ms. Rosebud helped me see as an a, a English scholar that, that you can move a noun into a verb. You don't believe me? Okay, here it is. Google is a noun, okay? But if you want to find out some information, what you do? You Google it! When you see what thought is and you start acting on it, you move from a noun to a verb. You put your thoughts into action, and your actions are really about what you are thinking. They did not know. Nobody knows what you are thinking until you start acting it out. Nobody knows you are thinking as a Christian until you start acting as a Christian. Nobody knows you are thinking as a redeemed person until you start acting as a redeemed person. Nobody knows you are thinking as a child of God until you start acting like a child of God. You've got to put your your thoughts into action. And the Bible, the Bible, y'all, it helps us understand that this woman, as she touched the hem of his garment, as she reached out and touched him, understand this, y'all, there was no power in the garment. The power was in the one carrying the garment. The healing, y'all, was not in the garment. The healer was the one carrying the garment. You're not getting it. The power, y'all, was not in her touching the fringes of his garment. Garment, but the power was touching the one who wore the garment. And I want somebody to hear me today that God is saying, I want you not just to have a casual relationship with me because of what I got on. I want you to know me because of what you, it was inside of you. Oh, 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 hear what I'm saying, my friends, because I want you to get this. The, the word touch itself is used by Luke in such a phenomenal way, Pastor L, because Luke as a physician, Luke as a writer, wants to be known, y'all, is that Jesus is not just to give a cursory connection with you. Jesus wants to be the surgeon and to cut out all the poison and all the sin and all the nastiness and all the hell that sometimes the world puts inside of us, and if Jesus can cut that out, then healing's going to take place. Healing for my soul. Healing for my spirit. Healing, oh, come on, Richard Smallwood, we're going to get to you in a bit. You've got to have a sense of healing about yourself, but you can't get healed until first you have some surgery done. Surgery done, surgery done. I, I, I talked to, talked to, talked to Ernest. Ernest is the man is the man that we have employed uh, to prune and make sure the yard looks good. Now, I ain't all that. I'm just saying that that's what Ernest do. See, when I used to cut the grass with a lawnmower from Lowe's, it would take me four, five hours. Ernest does it in 25 minutes. And I was figuring, should I dedicate myself to cutting grass for four hours? 
or spend four hours in the Word. But I think you watching me at C.N. Jenkins said, Reverend, I'll donate $2 to Ernest next time he needs to cut the grass. But what Ernest did, y'all, that I could not really appreciate recently, Ernest came and he trimmed back my bushes. And I was like, well, Ernest, ain't no wrong with these bushes. Why are you cutting them back? And he just kept on cutting. Matter of fact, he didn't cut, he was whacking Dr. Monroe. He was chucka, 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 chucka. And I was like, Ernest, man, man, they ain't done nothing to you. And he kept on whacking, chucka, 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 chucka. And then he stopped, he said, Dr. Cannon, the reason I'm cutting these bushes back now is because last year they bloomed. But if you want them to bloom this year, I got to prune them now. Okay, you're not getting it. Ernest was trying to help me understand. If I wanted to have pretty flowers this year, then I have to cut back for what the flowers grew on last year. And it's called a pruning process. The gospel tells us in the gospel of John that Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Cut off from me, you can do nothing. But if I prune you right now, if I cut you back right now, if I, if, if I cut off the dead so the life can come, to it. If, if I even prune back that that has some life into it, I guarantee you with the Holy Spirit, it's going to grow. You see, Luke is trying to help us recognize is that Jesus wants to do the pruning as well as the cutting. Let me move quickly because I want you to see what I got to shout about this text, Brother L. I got to shout because this woman used her pain to become her purpose. This woman, this woman, this woman in the text, y'all, that we don't know her name, we know her condition, but she used her pain to become her purpose. Don't miss that. I said we don't know her name, but we know her condition, and she used her pain to become her purpose. You didn't get it. I said we don't know her name, but we know her condition, and she used her pain to become her purpose. You see, somebody watching me right now, we don't know your name, but we know your condition. We don't know your name, but we know your location. We don't know your name and we know your character but God is saying I want you to use your pain to become your purpose to be your drive to be your get up to be your move up to be your go up I want somebody in the chat box right now to say you might not know my name but my purpose is to live my purpose is to give joy my purpose is to give life my purpose is to overcome my purpose is to stay clean my purpose is to stay sober my purpose is to be a response I don't know your name, but God has a purpose. And understand this, y'all. When she understood that her purpose was coming from her pain, she acted, y'all, acted on what you have heard until you get some information on your own. What you're saying, Brother John, the Bible says is that this woman heard about Jesus. And because she heard about Jesus, she made a thought in her mind, if I can just get to him, here's the good news, y'all. You might not know all of the Bible, but what little bit of the Bible you do know, you just keep applying that to your situation. You might not be able to preach like Peter and pray like Paul, but what prayer you can give, you keep on praying. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. You might not be able to do all those things. You just hold on enough until you get it for yourself. This woman, y'all, she understood that just because it's not your turn does not mean it's not your time. Let me back up and say that slowly so you get it. The reason that she acted that way, Brother Jerome, is that she recognized that it was not her turn, but it was her time. Okay, y'all still not feeling it. This woman, y'all, she got her blessing. Even though it was not her turn, it was her time. They didn't get it, Brother George, so let me break it down like a fraction. This woman, y'all, comes in the midst of a request from Jairus, who is a temple synagogue ruler. Jairus, who is the upper echelon, that, that, that group that did not get a stimulus check. Jairus. This is a brother, y'all, who's got money's mammy. He don't have to worry about anything. And he 
y'all makes a request. Jesus and his disciples are on their way to Jairus' house. Jairus was number one in line. This woman wasn't even in line at all. But the Bible says she still got her blessing. Can I help somebody? Y'all, it wasn't her. It wasn't her turn, but it was definitely her time. It wasn't her turn to get healed, but it was her time. And somebody watching right now need to know that God is speaking to your heart and to your spirit. And God is saying to you, honey, it may not be your turn, but now is your time. It may not be your turn, but now is your time. It may not, ooh, help me preach right there. God is saying that your time has come. It's time to get up. It's time to move forward. It's time to break the chain. It's time to be all that God wants you to be. Oh, my friends, you need to type right there, it may not be my turn, but I know it's my time. Oh, here's the last point I want to make about it, making your pain your purpose. You see, the healing, y'all, the healing again, is not in the garment, but it's the garment on the healer. I, I, I tried to drive that home to you, you know. You, you see, we, we get sometimes caught up in church stuff and church tradition and think if I could just get to the church, I can get to Christ. If I can just get around, you know, the deacons, I can get a good prayer through. If I can just get, ooh, if, if Pastor Lance and Pastor Cannon just stop by, then we're going to be, no, we ain't coming by. It's COVID-19. We ain't coming. We ain't coming. <laughs> I'm joking. We do drive by. Anyway, anyway, the point is, is, that, is that it's not coming to the building. It's having the Spirit of Christ inside of us. See, though the doors are closed, the church is still open. And I want somebody to hear that tonight because I want you to recognize is that, is that, is that Luke's gospel says it so well, Pastor L. Luke's gospel says is that, is that Jesus enters this story or this story is entered with there is a certain woman. Don't know her name, but we know her condition. And then Jesus says, then somebody touch me. That certain woman, don't know her condition. But we do know this, y'all is that when she hears, daughter, you are well, I guarantee you, she stopped being a certain woman and a somebody with a condition, and she started being all that God called. Can I just talk to somebody who's watching right now? Because God is saying a word of liberation to you. You have been called a certain woman or a certain man. And then you've also been identified with somebody came by here or somebody drove by or mm, I smell somebody in here. But guess what Jesus says? The only, where in, only place in the Bible where Jesus calls somebody daughter. The only place. Now, here's the shout right there. When we all get to heaven, we won't know who this woman is. We don't know what she talks about, how she talks. But I guarantee you she's going to be screaming like everything else, Dr. Monroe. My my name is daughter. He called me daughter. He didn't say I'm a certain woman or a certain man. He called me daughter. Is there anybody right now want to give God praise because God knows your name. God knows your condition. God knows what you come from. God knows where you are. Let me, let me close. Let me close because I, I got ahead of myself because there are some bonuses, bonuses that you need to, need to get, Miss P, when it comes down to to this text because I ain't even really talked about Jairus. I got to preach that. I can't do it next week. Got something else. Playing. But I but but, but 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 I ain't talked about Jairus. There's some bonuses because Jairus' daughter, according to the text, had died. And the people came from Jairus' house to say, Jesus, don't worry about it. <laughs> Sister girlfriend, she's passed. Don't worry yourself. And Jesus says, no. I'm on a journey. I've got something to do. And somebody hear what I'm saying right now because though your prayer may not have been answered at the time that you wanted it to be answered, God is still on the way. Though you may not have gotten your delivery when you wanted to get your delivery, God is still in the delivery business. You see, though you may have thought that God had forgotten about you, I want you to know God is still working on you so when God shows up, you're going to recognize God. 
You see, what the text helped me see, y'all, is that, is, that, is that the good news is, 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 that, is that realize, y'all, that all of your life is directed by the Lord. So there's nothing that happens outside of the will of Almighty God. And, and secondly, you've got to refuse to discount unexpected interruptions. Unexpected interruptions, they, they happen, y'all, because we think sometimes we can't achieve. They happen, y'all, because we think sometimes we don't have the capability. They happen, y'all, because we think sometimes that we don't have sin, we in the right sex. But let me just share a major shout with you because there were two people that helped me really celebrate the Super Bowl on Sunday. No, I wasn't really rooting for one particular team. I was just wanting to get... Uh, the chili that my wife made, so I acted like I was interested in the game. But, but nevertheless, I watched the game, and, and then when the game was over, I saw the trophy being presented, and two other people to hold that trophy and touch that trophy, y'all, was Lori Locus and Morel Javadadao. Uh, understand, two of the people who held that trophy, y'all, name were Lori and Morel, okay? So that you don't get it twisted, Two other people holding the trophy were coaches of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They were female football coaches in the NFL. Okay, one was a doctor, uh -huh. a physical doctor, a, a doctor of, oh, you're missing it. The other was a trained in, uh, a football player. Both are coaches. You see, if you see her, you can be her. And that's all I want you to hear, that when I saw those coaches, when I, when I saw Amanda Gordon, when, when, I, when I saw all those beautiful people at the Super Bowl who looked like children that you and I work with and play with and around, I couldn't help but if you could see her, you could be her. And y'all, that's what I want you to see today in the days that if you could see the woman with the issue of blood, you could be the woman with the issue of blood. If you can see the woman who had to press her way through, you can be the person pressing your way through. If you see the one who, who turns your thoughts into action, you can be the one that feels the warmth and the touch of Almighty God. I, I want to pray with somebody right now that you will see God and you will be with God. For Lord God, we know that without you, we can't do anything, but with you, God, all things are possible. So today, God, we pray that your Holy Spirit has spoken to us that we can see you as that woman saw you. God, we can see our way pressing through whatever the devil or whatever the world throws at us as a trap. God, we can see ourselves in a community of, of fellowship and support. And God, we can also just see the deliverance that you've given to us and all those around us. God, we're not just asking for a physical touch. God, we pray for a spiritual connection. And so I pray now that somebody who is watching or listening to this service, God, that they will hear the invitation. They will say, I want to do right. I want to do better. And so they will pray as as I'm asking them to pray, they're saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, just use me. God, give me another chance. God, there may be somebody who is listening for the first or second or third time, and they're saying, I, I just got to do better. I, I know what it means to be in the church, to be in Christ, but, but COVID has just made me lazy, so I just need to straighten up. So God, I pray that person gets renewal. And God, I pray that someone will will see this as an evangelism tool and they will share it, God, and they will take parts of the service, parts of the song, parts of the prayer, God, and just use that as their tool to bring somebody else into a relationship with Christ. We thank you, God, for those who watch. We thank you, God, for those who listen. We thank you, God, for those who've been a part of this service. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. My friends, I thank you so much. Thank you for being a part of this service. The Dr. Monroe and the band continues to play. There's a bomb in Gilead. There's healing for your soul. And for anybody who is watching now, you may have had some hurt in your life. Church hurt, family hurt, life hurt, disappointments. We invite you to be a part of a warm 
Christian community that really wants you to be whole. Simply call the church, email us, let us know how we can be a part of your spiritual journey. I love you, I pray for you, and I just want you to know that God is asking you today to move from thinking into action. My friends, thank you for joining us. Thank you so, so much for praying for us. Thank you for all of your support. Do join us if you are a teenager for our teenage worship. Our teenagers are going to be online shortly. And then for our children's uh, ministry, they're going to be also gathering whatever it is as a family and invite somebody to come and be a part of that. That's what makes a difference. Y'all, I want you to have a great day, a great week, a great opportunity serving God. Take this word applied to your life, and we will be back with you same time, same space next week. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.